Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Superman Lois and the Arrowverse as a whole. Today we're going to be talking about some new interesting comments that Tyler Hoechlin made over the last couple of days. There was an event, a Comic Con Expo in Vancouver. This is where we're getting the comments from, and the link will be in the description below to the site where I got the comments from. So without further ado, if you do go on to enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any DC TV videos later this year. Okay, so the title of the article from Bleeding Cool is Superman Lois, Tyler Hoechlin Addresses Series Ghosting Arrowverse. So as you guys know, the Arrowverse as a whole is very connected for the most part. However, in Superman Lois, we have only had one big reference to the Arrowverse, and that was when John Diggle showed up last season. So even this season, there's been no reference to any of the other Arrowverse shows or anything from Superman and Lois's past. So you guys have to remember that Superman was first introduced on Supergirl, and at the end of the day, Superman and Lois is a Supergirl spin-off. I've said that many times, but it's the truth. So Superman was introduced in Supergirl Season 2 in the premiere episode, and he showed up like a bunch more times. Then he kept on appearing, especially in crossover events, which is where we saw the introduction of Lois Lane, played by Bitsy Tullock, as you all know. And so I believe that was a Flash episode she showed up in, and that was the first time that they both appeared on screen together. So one of the big complaints that fans have made because they are so rooted into the Arrowverse isn't like Naomi, which was just introduced recently with the first episode, and she'd never been involved in the Arrowverse before, so with its disconnections from the Arrowverse, it's not all too surprising or shocking, but with something like Superman Lois that is heavily connected or was so in the past, people have been kind of complaining that there is barely any connection. And at the end of the day, I have to say this, it is 100% connected because Dickle showed up. That was the one thing we needed. However, yes, I like the way that Bleeding Cool word this, they have been ghosting the Arrowverse, and so I'm interested to see what Tyler Hoechlin has to say about this matter, because at this expo in Vancouver, a fan asked him about this. So this is Tyler's answer, it's quite long, but I'm gonna read it all out. So he goes, I would say there are so many different layers to that, especially for us last year having COVID. I know there were ideas of doing crossovers and they just got scrapped right away. I mean, even keeping your own production up and running was so difficult that it just got completely squashed. For us, at least for me, the way I have approached it from the beginning, again, these are all conversations that go on between all kinds of people in LA and everywhere else. For us, we kind of just take care of what we're taking care of on the day to day, so up in Vancouver. For me, knowing what Bitsy and I have done in previous shows and how we had our infant child before coming into this world of having two teenagers, I just had to make sense of it in my mind, how we got there, and for me, it was a clean slate. Because otherwise I'd be asking questions like, what happened to our infant child? Hoechlin explained. So let's break down this bit first and then we'll go into his later comments because there's another paragraph in regards to what he says. So basically he puts the blame on COVID and it's 100% understandable. However, there could have been, you know, an Armageddon crossover, but that never went ahead. So I understand blaming on COVID, but there is always the chance that they could have had like one character show up or even I think the big thing is there's been no verbal references, which was not a limitation by COVID and they could have involved them in the Arrowverse by just stating Kara's name or stating James Olsen's name or referencing The Flash or anything like that. And yes, the big thing that they referenced was Crisis and everything that happened when Diggle showed up. But apart from that, that is the only verbal reference that we've had on the show. So I think the idea of blaming COVID for the whole show's neglection of the Arrowverse and ghosting it isn't actually a very good explanation, but it's a good explanation for why there haven't been any physical crossovers, but that doesn't excuse references. So I do think it's actually them trying to separate themselves from what came before and start with this new clean slate, like Tyler said. So he had to look at it in terms of, he was starting with a new clean slate because he would be asking these questions like, what happened to their infant child? Why do they have two teenagers? Well. I'm sad to say, but that is the questions that the Arrowverse fans have been asking because 
there has been no concrete explanation as to why they retconned all of this and why they've been changing things. They have been quite reluctant to talk about, you know, why they are Ghosts in the Arrowverse, why they are retconning these different things. They're just talking about the show as a whole and ignoring, and especially the showrunner, all the changes they have made and it understandably has annoyed a lot of Arrowverse fans because everyone was so excited for the crossover, when that would eventually happen and if Superman and Lois, because it's a really good show, if it would link up to the rest of the Arrowverse because it would be amazing to see some of our other characters show up in the show which is doing really good right now and I think it's a really good show and I've been enjoying it week to week. But starting on a clean slate infers that basically nothing came before and yes you can blame it on Crisis which is definitely their explanation if they're ever going to be asking in an interview like if the showrunner is asked why are you retconning this he's going to be like you know well we just chose to do that and we had Crisis as our backup. What do you think about this? Let me know down in the comments below. Let's go ahead and move on to Tyler's next comments. So for me, just to clarify and make it easier for me to get into what we were doing, I just cut it and started over. So he completely erased in his mind what he did on Supergirl, what he did in the crossovers. So he's basically saying none of that existed in his mind and that's how he started Superman Lois. And so with this ideology, if they're going to be involved with the Arrowverse in the future, this version of Superman shouldn't remember the other people because nothing in the past existed. So this means this version of Superman has always been on this Earth. I don't know if it's Earth Prime or not, but with Diggle showing up, it confirms they're in the Arrowverse and they do remember what happened before. So this kind of thinking doesn't make entirely that much sense. And if there is a big crossover, Tyler's going to have to rethink his thinking about the character and the way that he perceives it. And I'm not criticizing Tyler here, I just wanted to say, I'm just saying that in the grand scope of things, there is going to be a crossover at one point. And it's just a little bit weird that they're going to completely start on a clean slate and meet up with these other characters down the line, which infers they have a history. So he continues, he says, whatever that ends up being, that's the thing with TV2. With film, you know where you start, you know where you finish. With TV, it's constantly evolving, so it might be one thing today, and it might be something completely different tomorrow or next week or a year from now. So to say anything definitively, I know it's always annoying that we don't do it, but it wouldn't be doing it justice at all because you don't know, it's never like a final answer until the show is over and then you get reboots. Hey, it never ends. So for us right now, just at least the way I'm approaching it is, for me, the only memory I have as this Clark is that this has been my life with these guys and that's just how I'm approaching it, so who knows, time will tell the rest. Basically what he's saying here is don't expect the expected, like anything can happen because it's TV and everything is evolving constantly and there is no one definitive end. So. What he's saying is, there is always the chance that Superman Lois is going to cross over with the rest of the Arrowverse again, and he's confirmed there's been talks over the last couple of years for more crossovers, and that's probably going to happen next year because it's the Arrowverse's 10th anniversary, so you would suspect they're going to be planning a big crossover at some point, and Superman would probably be involved in that. So for now, this is the way that they've approached this show, they've started on a clean slate, and that's why you're not getting references to Supergirl, to these other shows. And even though it may frustrate some fans, it's just how TV works. Although not everyone approaches it in this way, because if you see other Arrowverse shows in the past, they from the get-go tried to really involve it in the rest of the Arrowverse. Like, just look at The Flash. When The Flash had its premiere, it started off by itself, but then pretty quickly in Season 1 we had the Arrow crossover, and at the end of the day, the Flash characters as well, Barry, Caitlin, and Cisco, were all introduced on Arrow, and Arrow was always involved. They crossed over every season, and same thing went for Supergirl. Like, even in Supergirl Season 1 being on a separate network on CBS, they still had the Flash crossover. And then the year after that, we had another crossover, and then every year, as Supergirl aired, we had crossovers, lots of references to the other shows, and same thing, vice versa, there's always reference to everyone else, even if people aren't showing up. So overall, 
I'm fine with the way that Superman Lois is approaching things. I think it's very good. I think it's a great show, actually. I think it's one of the best Arrowverse shows out there. However, I do think it's a bit of a shame that they are kind of distancing themselves away from the Arrowverse. But I do have hope that they're going to rejoin the Arrowverse and revitalize all the fans relationship with the show because it's going to be epic it's going to be awesome when you see superman the flash finally cross over once again because at this point it's been a couple of years yes armageddon was big on the flash but that didn't involve superman and it was quite restrictive as to who showed up it was just like a couple of characters or one character from a specific show but definitely be on the lookout for next year i'm sure some news is going to come out pretty soon especially as we head towards the cw upfronts where they will definitely announce if they have anything big planned for the arrow versus 10th anniversary and a potential future crossover so that's about it for this video guys thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like and a comment it really helps out the channel also subscribe and turn on notifications if you're new to not miss any future videos reminder to you guys the flash is coming back this week along with a new episode of superman and lois so be on the lookout for videos when they come out also please be sure to click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video and for now i'll catch you guys later goodbye I see red.